One of the most frequently asked questions I get to do with Idol Heroes is who should your first Transcendence Hero be? Now, this is typically a question asked by newer players who have been playing through the early game and have gotten to 5 million crystals of Transcendence. When you reach this milestone, you can go to the Gate of the Void, the Evolution Cube, and then you can select any of these Transcendence heroes available here to build on your account. And with all this choice for who your Transcendence hero could be, it's quite a difficult decision to make on your account. So today I'm going to be talking about the top 5 first Transcendence heroes that you could use. So there's a few things we need to break down before making this list. The first thing is your account is not going to look like this one. You're not going to have lots of different Transcendence heroes and you're certainly not going to have enough resources to improve the Tree of Origin levels on your heroes. That means it's very unlikely you'll be able to add sublimation to your hero who is your first Transcendence hero unless of course you're a heavy spender. Now, for the majority of free-to-play and budget players, then, even the glory challenge is going to be unlikely to be completed. And actually, you cannot do any Tree of Origin improvements until you unlock Void Campaign, which cannot be done until you have a Void 4 Transcendence Hero on your account. So what should you do? Well, considering you have very limited ability to do the glory challenge, it's unlikely that you have the 233,000 spiritual lessons needed to get to Tree of Origin 3, so this mid-level here is going to be out of reach for you. We're looking not for a Transcendence hero that we can build up and use as a powerful main hero. Instead, we're looking for someone who can support our already existing strategy. For that reason, many of the top picks for big Transcendence heroes will not be smart decisions. Heroes like Lord of Fear Aspen or Doom Terminator Vulcan may seem like very attractive, powerful Transcendence heroes to build, but without their sublimation and without a good Celestial Island which is heavily invested in, you will not get the most out of those heroes. And because as an early player with only one Transcendence Hero, you're not going to have a Cloud Island that looks like this, the tons of attack and HP that you could gain from a well-established home is just not going to be available. So that damage dealer like a Lord of Fear Aspen or a Doom Terminator Vulcan goes from being a fantastic pick to absolutely terrible because they do not have the firepower to back up the decision of adding those to your account. Now granted, if you're a spender who can get a giant killer, has invested tons in events and can skip straight up and sublime every ability on these heroes, then yes, Doom Terminator Vulcan and Lord of Fear Aspen could be excellent choices. But even without having two or three other Transcendence heroes to support them, there are likely going to be better picks. And heck, if you're a spender, you probably do not have level 130 achieved on your account, which is necessary to beat campaign and ultimately unlock the Void campaign. So a lot of this advice will still work for you guys as well. So who should we choose then? What are we looking for from this hero? As I said, it needs to be a supportive hero that already builds on existing strategies on your account. Now, if you've seen my earlier videos, you will hopefully be running an account with Eloise, Tix, Carry, and Waldeck, with Ignis there to offer control immunity to your Eloise. If you haven't seen that video, I will link that up there in the top corner and also link it in the description for those of you looking for an account that doesn't quite yet have a Transcendence Hero. But assuming you have reached that point, who could you consider on your account? Well, at number five, it may surprise you, but Lord of Death Azrael is actually a really interesting pick. What Lord of Death Azrael offers, which is different to any other Transcendence hero, is the ability to deal damage to opponents and die, and then resurrect after either he's managed to kill someone, or enough heroes have died on the battlefield, or enough time has passed, which causes him to resurrect. This continuously pressuring damage and constant resurrection makes him a very interesting hero to add to your account. As well, Lord of Death Azrael is technically usable in the Shadow Seal Land once you have level 20 achieved in that. Now, assuming you're using an Eloise, level 20 in Shadow Seal Land should be very much achieved even before she's E5. So this Lord of Death Azrael does slot in quite nicely. There also do exist strategies where you can use Lord of Death Azrael to help you beat Vanquisher in the Void Vortex. So the added damage pressure and resurrection that Azrael adds is really strong. And the one weakness of Lord of Death Azrael is once he's dead, he needs someone to stay alive to give him time to come back. 
Unfortunately though, Eloise is really good at sustain, so she can stay alive, make time for Lord of Death Azrael to return, and he can add extra damage pressure for your team. Combine that with a hero like Tix, who also deals damage when he's dead, you will have lots of passive damage assisting your Eloise, making it easier for her to clear waves. Azrael is the bottom of this top 5 list, but definitely something fun for those of you looking for a different hero that offers something that's not necessarily traditional, but still fun to use, because ultimately this first Transcendence hero is not going to be a forever pick on your account. You will move away from them when you dedicate your account to more Transcendence heroes once you have managed to achieve the Glory Challenge. So if you're looking for just a bit of fun and you don't care about purely optimal progress, but you want something that could be interesting alongside your Eloise before you've gone and done the glory challenge and built a team dedicated to Transcendence Heroes, then yeah, Lord of Death Azrael can be really cool. Number four on this list is Doppelganger Natalia. Now, Natalia is interesting because she offers support for the hero with the highest attack on your team and also herself. She's a little different from what you'd expect from a normal support, as most of what she brings to the table is a mixture of damage and survival. You can see Guiding Glow here is giving you added holy damage, damage reduction, and you do get some additional crit damage. Now, the crit damage is wasted on a hero like Eloise, but you could still use this with a strategy that necessarily doesn't use Eloise as a main hero. You might use someone else like a Nosuke if you're being very strange. But either way, she does offer survival to your main hero and gives them extra damage. This makes Natalia really fun. Also, Natalia focuses a specific target, making it easy for her to deal damage to that particular individual. And if you are fortunate enough to have a giant killer copy, she can deal a ton of damage even just as a tenant. Natalia does offer great support in her base kit, but her support is eclipsed by other support heroes that exist in the game. So what's the big strength of Natalia then, if there are slightly better supports earlier on? Well, it's that Natalia is a tenant for Doom Terminator Vulcan. And ultimately, when you have managed to complete the glory challenge and get level 120 on a hero for the Tree of Origin, you can then ultimately build a Shadow, Abyss, Fortress, Forest, Dark, and Light by regressing these heroes and building them up in a different faction, continually getting you a whopping 2.1 million spiritual essence for this bottom row, and this row here in the middle is giving you an additional 600,000. So you can, in theory, get 2.7 million spiritual essence just from here. Combine that with the time you've managed to achieve sublimation, when you do have two or three Transcendence heroes, it is probably going to be good for your account to switch to a Doom Terminator Vulcan or a Lord of Fear Aspen, which we will talk about in a future video. But given that Doom Terminator Vulcan is a common direction for players, especially if they're spenders hoping to get a giant killer copy, or heck, they're just a free-to-play player looking to use Vulcan as their main character, it is very, very common to use Vulcan with Natalia, because Natalia can be used in the Light Seal Land alongside the Vulcan and is also his tenant. So you will want Vulcan and Natalia. And the main appeal here then is that you do not have to use 10 soul symbols to remove the Natalia from your account. Whereas if you went with someone like Lord of Death Azrael, when you get to the decision to build Vulcan or Lord of Fear Aspen, you will have to get rid of the Azrael with 10 soul symbols. So by choosing Natalia, you set yourself up for Vulcan, you can get a good copy of Natalia from the auction house, and you save yourself 10 soul symbols because you will not need to destroy her. This is great. Just make sure you don't put Tree of Origin improvements on her because you will need those to do the glory challenge, so keep them off her until that's fully completed. Because if you do decide to upgrade her Tree of Origin, it means you will still have to use 10 soul symbols to get all of that stuff back to complete the glory challenge. For similar reasons, therefore, Scarlet Queen Halora is another excellent choice if you're looking for a support hero for your Eloise that also could save you 10 soul symbols. What Halora offers is support for your team in several different forms. First of all, her basic attack could improve her own crit and crit damage, so she's buffing herself, whilst also reducing the crit of opponents, giving you some more survival for your team by reducing their chance of critting. As well, when a round ends, every one survived ally in the battle is going to heal this is going to grant Eloise more survival. And as well, Queen's Guard is an ability that improves the all damage dealt of your team, giving Eloise an additional 20% damage 
which means she's going to add more pressure and kill enemies more effectively. Finally, the active skill improves the critical strike damage that opponents take, which when combined with heroes like Tix, who you should have on your team alongside Eloise, you can deal quite a lot of damage. Now, the support that Halora offers is excellent, and she does increase your damage quite significantly. So if you're looking for a way of improving the aggression of your Eloise, Halora is a great support hero. On top of that, Halora saves you 10 soul symbols if you go for the Lord of Fear Aspen route, because Lord of Fear Aspen and Halora is a common Transcendence pair, which people have used time and time again to make progress in Void Campaign. In fact, Lord of Fear Aspen with Halora can beat Chapter 1. No A tiers needed, you can do it with just B tiers. I have done it myself on the Diamond series, if you want to go and check out that. That will show you how I journeyed with an Aspen and Halora through Campaign and cleared that quite nicely. So many people, especially early on, love to use Aspen and Halora together when you've done the Glory Challenge and managed to get yourself two Transcendence Heroes. So by choosing Halora as your first Transcendence Hero, you're not only gaining a support for Eloise, but you're setting up that future tenant for Aspen, meaning you do not have to, like I said with the Natalia, use 10 soul symbols to remove her and get everything back. But again, don't upgrade her Tree of Origin because that will not benefit you because you will still have to use the 10 soul symbols to remove this stuff back for when you do do the Glory Challenge. So just keep her at Void 4 and let her be a support hero to your team. Next on our list is the classic traditional choice that people often go for, which is Fairy Queen Vessa. Many people misunderstand why Fairy Queen Vessa is often decided here, because she herself, they go, oh, she's very weak. But the reason you use Vessa is not necessarily to provide damage, it's instead for her amazing healing and the fact she provides you with shields. The shields will protect your Eloise, giving her much needed survival, and the additional healing will keep her alive. That longevity that the two offer is excellent. As well, Queen is brilliant in boss fights, as the longer the fight goes on, the more single attacks she's able to do, and that enhances her damage further and further. Vessa is notorious for being a common pick early on for people wanting to do more damage in broken spaces, and it gives you a hero that you can reliably use in Star Expedition, because it's quite difficult to get a good Star Expedition team together when you only have one Transcendence hero. With Vessa, though, you can run strategies out there, perhaps using the Osis set and carries which can die and resurrect, which then continuously buffs your Vessa, allowing her to deal good damage. This is not the world's greatest Star Expedition strategy, but it is better than anything you would be able to do with just an Eloise. The Vessa also likes having a strong active skill here, so you can make her Void 4, get great healing, great shields, and all in all, Vessa is just providing you with consistent, solid support and chip damage through her active skill, which allows you to do very nicely with your team. It is her active skill that is particularly excellent here, but also Vessa does have her own survival benefits in that when she drops below a certain threshold, she is going to buff herself. Also, her basic attack is going to target the strongest enemy, reducing their damage dealt, which additionally helps with your survival, and even her basic attack is able to heal you and provide you with shields. That means you don't need continuous energy feed to make Vessa useful. Whether it's a basic or an active skill, she's still going to put in work. So all in all, Vessa is just a very reliable support hero and is a very simple pick to add to your team. She just improves your survival and improves your damage slightly, allowing that Eloise on your account to do very well. But also with any team, Vessa could do well because healing and shields and the support that she brings is viable with anybody early on, making Vessa a very reliable support hero. The only counter argument for Vessa is that you still do need to use 10 soul symbols like you would with an Azrael to destroy her when you get to two Transcendence Heroes because Vessa doesn't fit into a double Transcendence Hero strategy. The only time you would keep the Vessa around is if you wanted to build Freya because you weren't yet ready to do the Glory Challenge. By bringing Vessa and Freya together, you get a lot of support for your team, which will allow your Eloise to do excellently. Although personally, if I was looking for a second Transcendence Hero, I would probably lean towards Halora or Natalia to support that Vessa so that you already have them built for when you choose to go with Lord of Fear Aspen or Doom Terminator Vulcan, and that way you again save yourself 10 soul symbols. Or if you did choose Freya to go alongside the Vessa, you need 20 soul symbols to remove the Vessa and the Freya for when you were ready to go and do the entire glory challenge and get the most for your account. Because when you've completed the full glory challenge, you'll need neither Vessa or Freya, and you'll be switching to Lord of Fear Aspen and either Halora or Vulcan with Natalia. Or heck, you could even choose to go with Mockman, but that will be a strategy for a future video. So make sure you subscribe to hear more about that.
So the top hero on this list then is going to be Hyperspace Hunter Alamac. This is likely no surprise for anyone that regularly tunes into my live streams, as I do recommend Hyperspace Hunter Alamac for the majority of new players. The only difference between Alamac and Vessa is Vessa is a lot easier to get copies of because she's older, she's available in normal 5-star shards, and she is one of the first Transcendence heroes, meaning she's available in standard Transcendence chests. If, on the other hand, though, you are able to get the rarer Alamac copies on your account, building an Alamac is absolutely fantastic. What he brings to the table is additional shields every time an ally blocks, and for those of you that don't know, Eloise is a hero that loves to block, as block gives her counterattacks. So not only is it supporting a block strategy, it's giving her shields whenever she decides to do so. And on top of that, you gain Elegance, which is an ability that improves your all damage reduction and heals you, so you get additional healing and survival for your Eloise. Alamac also has his own ability to counterattack and potentially stun an opponent. Now, this is typically not great with Eloise because she doesn't like it when enemies get crowd controlled, but in certain circumstances, actually heroes like Garuda, you would rather got stunned because sometimes just getting hit by an active skill from one of those heroes can just dominate the Eloise. So the fact that this stun can have a proactive benefit for your team rather than a negative benefit it actually can really, really help. So by giving you an extra way of shutting down opponents like a Garuda, it can significantly help you in the Void Vortex to clear pesky Garuda waves, which are often a huge problem for Eloise users. As well, this helps in the Realms Gate, because in Realms Gate, the Forest Waves also do have Garuda. So just having Alamac in here, not only to give you shields and defense, but have that proactive stun to stop a Garuda is really, really nice. Also, Garuda's basic attack always hits the front line, so you could choose to put Alamac in slot 1 to guarantee that stun on her. That's a strategic option worth considering, but most people prefer to put Eloise at the front because it allows her to block more consistently. Also, Alamac can taunt if you decide to invest in his core, and that taunt can distract enemies to hit him instead. However, that does move attacks away from Eloise, reducing her counterattack, so you probably don't really need to have his core on your account. That said though, his core is going to attract specifically the highest attack enemies, which means he can take heat off of Eloise if that's necessary, and there are certain times where that can be useful. But do bear in mind, to get Alamax core, you will need to make him Tree of Origin 1, and that is generally not advised. So personally, I would not be thinking about getting his core, I would not be taking him to Tree of Origin 1, and that leads us to one of the biggest strengths of Alamax, is that he's actually light on Stellar Shards, because Alamax's active skill isn't very important, so getting him to Void 3 is all you need to do to get this Sacred Sword passive. Then, attack is the most important stat on Alamac because the higher his attack is, the more shields he can bring. So you will invest in the Imprint of Strength to add more attack to the Alamax build. This means you only need Void 3 plus the Imprint of Strength, which is significantly less Stellar Shards than you would need to Void for a hero like Vesa, for example. Therefore, you can save Stellar Shards to either improve the Tree of Origin of your Eloise, or if Eloise is already Tree of Origin 3, you could give Stellar Shards to Tix or Carry to make them much stronger tenants. This means then that Alamac not only improves the survival of your Eloise through his abilities, but also improves her strength by not needing as many Stellar Shards, which means you can better assign your resources to improve the overall power of your team. Therefore, in my opinion, I think Alamac is an excellent choice, but if you were to pick any of the heroes on this list for the strength that I outlined, I would be completely happy with the direction of your account. What is important is understanding why you have chosen the hero. Vessa is an easy to obtain hero, very safe and a very traditional choice indeed. For Alamac, if you have the copies, he's excellent and a very solid support. In the case of Holora and Natalia, they build a tenant for a future hero you will want to invest in, whether it's Vulcan or Aspen, thus saving you 10 soul symbols for the future. And if you go with Azrael, you're just looking for someone fun to give you a bit of extra damage and to be different, and hopefully unlock some additional, more aggressive strategies, which most Eloise users won't normally have access to. Let me know which of these heroes is your favourite, and if there's any other options that I haven't considered, I'd love to hear it. For example, Star Alchemist Holmes Jung could be a really interesting choice with his perceptual disorder, and you might be wondering why Elena and Freya didn't make this list, but it's for the simple reason that they provide dodge on your team, and dodge is counter-synergistic with Eloise. If, however, you weren't running an Eloise and you had a different main hero, then yeah, you could consider Freya and Elena because they're excellent supports. It's only because dodge doesn't help Eloise because it stops her from blocking that I didn't include those heroes 
on this list. Either way, guys, thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you're interested in catching the next video in this series, it's going to be talking about Transcendence Heroes and which ones to build when you're looking to finally focus on Transcendence Heroes as your main heroes instead of having Transcendence Heroes to support an Eloise like we were talking about today. I'll see you next time. Thank you for tuning in. Have an amazing week. And of course, happy hunting.